Hey, how you doing, big girl? Yeah. So, let's talk about how Gracie came into our care. So first things first is I'll just mount you guys up this way. Put you on the fence. That'll do. Okay. All right, so uh, I guess we need a horse. So let's go get her and we'll chit chat about her. What do you think? You ready to be captured? You're such a good girl. Flies everywhere. Okay, come here. Good girl. Okay, so uh, Grace is on her fourth year of life. She's an Arabian. mare and um, well when she got here now let's start all the way back so uh, back in about February or so I think it was we got a message from a friend of her owner and uh, She'd asked if, uh, if I have availability or the time to, to, to train her, to, to get her to where she'd be okay with all kinds of stuff. And uh, I got a little bit of information about her. And, and uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, we're a little busy at the moment because winter was very busy. And... Um, And we didn't have any space at the time, but I said, well, just let me know and we can take it from there. And so supposedly she got, her friend got a hold of her owner and uh, they cheated chatted, but I didn't really hear back for a little while until a couple or three months, two or three months later, I guess it was. Uh, two months maybe, because we got her in May. So yeah, so Gracie's been here just over a month. And uh, she's just turned four, as I said. So she's pretty young. And, uh, and her owner, I found out later, had owned a few horses. Uh, she's a little, she's quite a bit older lady. So when you're older and, uh, you know, you just kind of want to love on them as much as you can rather than, because uh, training is hard work. Um, some things can get missed in a horse's life in the beginning. And there were a lot of indications that were, there were some things missed in Gracie's world that would enable her to be a more confident horse. Um, a calmer horse or, you know, less skittery, I guess is a good way to put it. Right? I know. Road noise is loud in the morning from rush hour. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Um, so a couple months later, uh, her friend got a hold of me again and said, well, I'd sad to say that uh, her owner had actually passed away. And so there really wasn't anybody who was willing or able to sort of handle what um, what is going on or what was maybe still is most you know some going on with her because she's just very difficult to handle and so I said okay well we'll go down there and 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 check her out um, because there was an offer made at that point that because there's nobody really to, to take care of her or handle her, um, would you like to have her? I said, okay. Uh, a lot of times 
when you have horses already, you're not really keen to go get another one unless you very specifically sort of pick them out. So getting a free horse um, can be um, can be a challenge. And uh, anyway, so what? No, no. Um, so we went to go to go check her out. And I have some footage I can show you guys of uh, sort of our initial uh, meeting with her, right? You were a pain in the butt. This flies everywhere. Um, so I'll show you that. I don't know if you'll be able to catch it. I don't know if I can bring her over. Let's see. Let me take a look. Look <coughs> how oh, jittery she is. Got myself electrocuted. See? Ah. Oh. Come on, frog feet. Nope, it's true. And then it becomes it takes a village. Oh. Yeah, it's a good one. And so f f for all of that, she when when we got there and 
it's quite common to find on, on horses that are hard to handle. You'll find they either have a halter on or nobody can get a halter on. And that's really common. Um, so she had a halter on. So the first order of business for me, or at least in my mind, was um, to, to, to get the halter off, check her out. And, uh, but then I was told very specifically, well, if you're gonna take that off, you gotta make sure to get something back on. So we did that too. And um, as I always do, uh, I mean, a lot of people will hire a vet to come in and do a, a, a pre-purchase exam, pre-purchase exam, and check a horse out, check their teeth, check their, their body. Um, so I think I'm confident enough to know enough maybe to get myself either in trouble or know enough to, to not require a vet to come out. But we took a good look over her and she had some skin issues. Um, likely from bedding, and then uh, some feet issues. Now I'm pretty good at feet, so I wasn't too worried there. And uh, I'm going to cover that in a completely different video. Uh, but I will say that her feet, actually I can show you. You get too worried too often, calm down. Um, that uh, the, uh, her, especially her front feet, look like what are called club feet. And um, there's actually a, a now deceased uh, vet, but a very knowledgeable vet um, that didn't call them club feet. He called them, uh, I think, stump feet. Stump feet? I have the paper somewhere. It's a medical paper. And I think that's a more accurate word for what these are. But a lot of people know them as club feet, where the, the foot stands up too high in the heel. Come here. And... Um, that's, that was just uh, based on the, what I saw and, and the pictures and video we took as well. Uh, it was just due to a lack of trimming. Uh, asking about it, supposedly she was so hard to handle that um, uh, they wanted to, uh, or felt they needed to tranquilize her just to trim her. So, so I thought, well, I'll just try a little bit and see if, where I can get to. So I gave her a little bit of a trim and then we went on our way. And uh, it's a long drive home, so we had a big discussion on whether or not we would get another horse and go through the, uh, the time it takes to, to get them good with things. Zeus is here. Hi, buddy. And, uh, you know, she's in hard enough conditions or it seemed like it, was just, it would just be a good idea, a really nice thing to do. I'm still... Still working on touching her mouth. She doesn't like it. And uh, anyhow, so we decided to go get her at some point, but we were full. We had no space. And um, after a couple of weeks, we discovered that uh, 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 her halter wasn't on, so nobody could catch her and sort of let her out. And I said, well, I'll pop in and put another halter back on her and see what we can do. And uh, we just took the trailer and picked her up. But I might be able to. Mm -hmm. Keep scratching. Yeah, the neck isn't the issue more than the nose. Like, not by the face. Now she's a neat color.
one taller than you. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, she does have one. We got it on video. Yay, hallelujah. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. She leads okay. just fine. You did it. You did it. Oh, yay, good girl, Peanut. That was the day we picked her up. A couple weeks later, uh, I think just over a month ago, May, I don't know, middle of May somewhere. And now it's the middle of June. And uh, so she's been here for a month now. She's been here for a month. And, you know, pretty jittery horse, <laughs> pretty nervous, and uh, hardly halterable. Took a while to get her to be pretty good with altering and I've shown a couple of videos here and there about the work that we do to try to get her good touch the top of her head and play with her ears and cover her eyes and do all the usual stuff that I just finished talking about in my last video of why it's so important to do this stuff and the the, the biggest thing I'll say again the biggest reason you want to do this stuff is because it indicates a level of safety that they will feel. If they don't feel safe or good around you, you'll never get this done. That's why they, you know, people think that horses don't like this. Because they don't feel safe. Here's an easy way to make her not feel safe. Watch. Okay, well, usually this really bothers her. Honestly, I'm not... <laughs> Usually if I lay on her neck a little bit like this, she gets worried there, okay? That's what a worried horse looks like. We'll try again. And I bet... Oh, come on, Gracie. Will you please freak out? Okay, forget it. Anyways, um, there's lots of things that worry her though. I mean, there. There, okay? So... You can make it happen. You can make a you can make a good horse look bad really easily. Or you can make a bad horse look really good. So more or less I think um, we just had to do it because there are just so many people that were worried for her and worried about her. One of the most recent comments I heard um, was that if you were going to go get her, or, you know, get her from a field or get her from, and it was true. I mean, when I first had to get her from a paddock, it was, it was pretty worrisome. And getting her in a trailer was just a nightmare, really scary. Um, so I believe it. Uh, but but the, the point was that if you were to go get her, you were kind of putting your life into your hands. And I thought, yeah. So. But now we're best buds. And everybody loves her. So she gets a lot of lovin's here. And uh, stuff like this. Well. It's kind of second nature. Yeah. But it's hard, hard come by. I mean, it's not like it's been easy. I'm not saying that this was some kind of easy job to, oh, we just kind of got it done. No, it's been a month, a full month of trying hard. And that's sort of Gracie's story. That's the very basics, you know. She had a lovely owner who loved her, 
wanted the best thing for her and uh, was just about time. I mean, four years old is a pretty good time to get things started. And uh, she knew, her owner knew. She knew that, that Gracie would be kind of in trouble if she went out into the real world. Hey, don't, don't play with that. No. If she went out into the real world and somebody had to kind of be around her and stuff, and she knew it was time to get somebody to help her out a little bit. Oh, that's a good girl. And so uh, here she is. Anyways, so I, I think I can say I can say her owner's her owner's name was Betty. So you know we're really thankful to to Betty for her original thoughts and uh, and to her family to to gifting her to us to take care of her and help her grow up into the horse that, that everybody around her hopes that she will be. Including us. <laughs> Come here. Who's got a heavy head today? So, she's a nice little horse. Hopefully that's been kind of an interesting story. And uh, to kind of show you where she's got to so far, um, I'm going to talk about feet again pretty soon, for sure. I've already trimmed her, I think, three times now. Uh, the amount of changes that she needs, it could, couldn't possibly be done in one or two trims. I think three or four, I might. I might get them down to somewhat normal by the next trim. We'll see. Uh, that's it. I think that's it for Gracie's story. If you guys have any questions or thoughts or whatever, let me know. Be happy to answer them, maybe make a part two. But overall, that's her story. That's why she's here. Because you're a pain in the butt. Yeah. Are you a pain in the butt? She says, yes. Are you a pain in the butt anymore? No? Uh, I know, I'm just goofing with you. I am. You just have to tolerate it. It's your life now. Me. I know. You're a good girl. So. Okay, I'll leave it at that. And uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little bit here. Um, so, thanks for watching. And uh, what do you say? We'll see them again soon? Yeah, she's a good girl. Real good horse.